Welcome to News Beats on NITV. This is our Abuja studio in Nigeria. I am Christine Opara. First, the headlines. President Goodluck promises no rivalry with Vice President. Federal Capital Territory Minister swears in Area Council Chairman. Another Nigeria bound toxic waste ship blocked. Details in a moment. Dr. Goodluck Jonathan has promised that his government will not be marked by sour opposition involving himself and the newly sworn in Vice President, Nama Di Sambo. He assured Nigerians that he would work with Sambo as a team. He spoke shortly after the swearing in ceremony of the Vice President, which took place at the executive chambers of the presidential villa in Abuja yesterday. He also gave an idea of the task that the Vice President might be asked to take on when he stated that Sambo will meet with the economic team frequently to ensure delivery of promises to the public. He asked Sambo to be helpful and carry out his duties of office without trepidation or goodwill. In the end, he described the event as a unique and important one in the political history of Nigeria. President Goodluck Jonathan showed appreciation to the National Assembly, state governors, armed forces and the media for making the event possible. He particularly thanked the National Assembly for the prompt endorsement guaranteed denomination of the Vice President. The Vice President was immediately given the national honor of Grand Commander of the Niger by the President and said he was accepting the vast dependability trust on his shoulders with a deep sense of appreciation. He stated that the challenges facing the country will be surmounted. The chairman-elect of the six area councils in the Federal Capital Territory were today sworn in at the Eagle Square, Abuja. Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Honorable Bala Muhammad, conducted the ceremony which, according to our reporter, Ogo Uge, was full of pomp and pageantry. The six newly sworn in chairmen are Honorable Yahya Musa Muhammad, Abaji Area Council, Honorable Micah Jiba, Abuja Municipal Area Council, Honorable Peter Yuana Ushafa, Buari Area Council, Honorable Zakari Angulu Dobi, Gwagwalada Area Council, Honorable Danladi Etsu Zin, Kuje Area Council, and Honorable Joseph Shazin, Kwali Area Council. The Honorable Minister reminded the newly sworn in chairman of their duties as leaders. <laughs> In response, the new chairman of Guagualada Area Council pledged on behalf of his colleagues to live up to expectation. And on behalf of my people, I think the Area Council chairman would all come out to cooperate with you to ensure that the purpose of being elected into this office is not that. All that we want is sincerity of purpose, giving them direct dependence of democracy. And I also want to say that by the grace of God, we will give you this cooperation. Finally, different political groups and partisan politicians began a colorful display to show their joy and support for the new office holders. For NITV News, I am Ogo Daddy Uge. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Dumeji Bankole, said members will work hard to guarantee that marriages to juvenile girls are stopped in the country. He made this statement while at a meeting with members of the Nigerian Children Parliament yesterday in Abuja who came to present their declaration to him. The Speaker, who did not mention names, said the House of Representatives has received about eight petitions on the contentious marriage of a 13-year-old girl to a senator. The Speaker, though, asked the youthful parliamentarians not to be dispirited if their resolutions do not receive instant consideration, adding that from his understanding, not all resolutions passed receives quick treatment. On just crisis, the Speaker said he has visited the city about four times to commiserate with the families of the victims, some of whom are children. 
The Senate President of the Nigerian Children Parliament, Esther Afolayo, called for a boost in the budgetary allotment of children's welfare, while Emmanuel Attar, the Speaker of the Parliament, regretted the slow domestication of the Child Rights Act and asked Bankole to help. Mr. Bankole said he has always considered on the resolutions of the Nigerian Children Parliament to the appropriate quarters and guaranteed that he would continue to do so in the interest of the Nigerian child. The National Environmental Standards and Regulatory Enforcement Agency, NESRA, disclosed yesterday that a ship encumbered with toxic waste coming to Nigeria has been intercepted. This is coming six weeks after the Toxic Waste Dump Watch Committee of NESRA revealed a consignment full of waste in form of used lead acid batteries, used tires, Mazda cars, television sets, radios, fridges and computers headed for Nigeria. The impounded ship was sent back when it reached the shores of Nigeria. Belgian authorities detected this latest shipment which is said to be full of dangerous electronic materials like a Mazda truck, compressors, used fridges, tires, television sets and rugs. The waste materials were packed in the Mesdis and Scania trucks on March 2010 by Olabisi Olushoga en route to RMO shipping terminal, port of Antwerp in Belgium. Meanwhile, Director General of NESRA, Dr. Mrs. Ngeri Banebo, said the agency is working in partnership with the Interpol and the Basel Convention to checkmate actions of smugglers. She said NESRA was able to receive information as a result of the growing collaboration between the agency and the Seaport Environmental Security Network of the International Compliance and Enforcement. She highlighted that the agency was working with the Basel Coordinating Center in Ibadan to try to obtain the significant technology for recycling toxic electronic waste materials already in the country. Meanwhile, the Belgian authorities have sent it back to the port of origin following the working venture it has with Nigeria. Also, the federal government has launched an incorporated waste management scheme that would help the agency clear e-waste materials from the environment. The Senate yesterday bowed to public demands as it has decided to swear in Mr. Alphonsus Igbeke next Tuesday. The chairman, Senate Committee on Information and Media, Senator Ayogu Eze, said the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice advised the Senate that Igbeke should be affirmed in because there is no exceptional order convincing the Senate not to do so. Mr. Igbeke, who did not get to the Senate on time yesterday, missed the opportunity to be sworn in. Meanwhile, Tuesday next week has been fixed for Igbeke swearing in. He will be replacing the embattled Senator Joy Amodi. Speaker of the Akwaibom State House of Assembly, Honorable Ignatius Edith, and his deputy, Obong Okon Uwa, have been impeached. This is coming barely 24 hours after being suspended and given seven days provocation to quit or risk arraignment. Chairman House Committee on Information Obong Asukwo Dabi Udo said 21 out of the 26 members of the assembly signed the resolution to impeach the two primary officers. He said that to ensure there was no void in the house, the assembly decided that an acting speaker is by this decision empowered to reconvene for the purpose of electing the substantive speaker and deputy speaker. At the earliest suitable dates, according to our so called the impeached officers have committed offenses ranging from refusal to account for funds, total disregard and disrespect for the rules and standing order of the House and the Constitution of Nigeria. Meanwhile, Honorable Jack Udota was elected as the acting speaker and the sitting of the House adjourned to May 25th. And that's our take on news bits today. I am Christine Opera. Thanks for logging in.